Let's work a little bit this morning. I'm going to go back to where I was in Bible class. For, for you that, are, that were in class, please bear with me as I paddle through some of this. Second Kings, the fourth chapter. Second Kings, the fourth chapter. And I'm going to drop down, which is the context goes from verse 1 to 7, but I'm going to pick it up in verse 4, 5, 6, and 7. Picking it up, also reading in the New King James uh, uh, reading of the word. Second Kings, fourth chapter. And when you have come in, you shall shut the door behind you and your sons, then pour it into all these vessels and set aside the full ones. So she went from him and shut the door behind her and her sons who brought the vessels to her and she poured it out. Now it came to pass when the vessels were full that she said to her son, bring me another vessel. And he said to her, there is not another vessel. So the oil ceased. Then she came and told the man of God and he said, go and sell the oil, pay your debt and you and your sons shall live on the rest, live on the rest, live on the rest. The subject leads out into expecting the miraculous, expecting the miraculous. The miraculous is the occasion through divine supernatural intervention manifested by the powers of God, expecting the miraculous. Expectation is that hoping for the miraculous, the miracle that's needed. There are times in your life that you come to realize that God still performs miracles. According to Hebrews 13 and 8, Jesus Christ is the same today, yesterday, and forever. And when those miracles take place, it's an occurrence where you will know and everybody else will know nobody did that but God. And when you have a but God moment, it's a continuation of, of the miraculous that takes place in your life and in, in, in my life. Um, the Bible says miracles come and they come out of and within the will of God. 1 John 5 and 14 says that whatsoever you ask according to the, his will, he will do it. 1 John 5 and 14. If I asked it and it's according to his will, he, God, will do it. This woman in this story was in a dire street. She was crying to the man of God because she had debt to pay, debt to pay. She was in a very strong, uncomfortable, strange and uncomfortable place. He was at a place of extremes. I said on Wednesday night that God's man's extremities are God's opportunities. Uh, we've been there before, uh, Mary and I. We, we've been at that place where is it? We don't know how this is going to work out, or what we're going to do. Um, I've often testified about um, Candace telling us to go to the ATM, just get money out. She thought it was just it was just in there, and I tried it one day and put my ATM card in there, and they didn't send it back. <laughs> they kept the card, you know, it was just overdrawn. So I I thought there's a problem with the bank. So I got parked my car, walked inside, said, we've been wanting to see you. Come on in. I said, well, keep the card. If they ain't nothing on it, you know. That's when I found out that our, our wages had been garnished by the RS. They came in and just, just took it. I you know, wonder if God could just take time. Anyway, the IRS, <laughs> the RS just, just came in and garnished our wages and locked us out of our accounts. And we had, I said, oh, we need a miracle. We need God to do something to get us out of this, this crunch, you know. And then God created card sharks. Uh, that's another story. It was a, it was a game uh, that back in the day on television. It was called card shark, sharks, higher or lower, higher or lower. And so Mary, whatever I based herself, put an invitation to go on card sharks. And she went on there and she won. Um, she won 15700 <laughs> and $75 on card sharks, you know. So from that winning, we were not put out the church seeing cards go high and low, high and low, high and low. She won and from that the miracle took place, you know, because I didn't think she was gonna get on the show and then more so I didn't think we were gonna win, but, but she did win and from there the story goes on, we were able to pay the debt, we bought our first home and thank God that home was, was a beautiful place, we fixed it up. I think we bought the home for 75, 
$90,000 and fixed it up. And then a few years later, God called me to, us to Las Vegas and a few years after 1990. And a few years after that, my little sister was doing real estate in that neighborhood. I said, well, how much does that house cost now? We bought it for 90000 She said, your house that you guys lived in is now $1.5 million. I said, I said, Lord, same house, nothing miraculous done to it. I said, wow, if I would have kept that real estate, but I had to let the house go because we were living in a two-bedroom apartment with a rock welder. <laughs> You're laughing. I was laughing, too. And finally, we had to let the house go, and we told the real estate, just sell it. So he sold the house for, I think, a meager uh, $300,000, something like that, and we walked away with $300 because the rest of it was the gift to the gentleman who helped us purchase the home. So I was scratching my head saying, Lord, why would you bring me to Los Vegas from Los Angeles? I feel like I'm lost. But I need you to do something for me. I said, well, it's going to take a miracle to get this done because I don't know how you're going to do this. I mean, we, we lost our home. We're in this apartment. And, and last week I told you they had the petition for us to go back. So all that set us up for a miracle. And I'm going to come out of that story. But God still works miracles. He still works miracles. This woman's debt, I believe, back in 2 Kings, the fourth chapter, this woman's debt came from her husband that passed. No doubt he had other things he was responsible for. She was dependent on him as well as her, to take care of her and her sons. But now she's with this debt. It probably could just be just regular just household responsibilities. She was a homemaker and didn't have any income, but she was in debt. The question is as asked, is it easy to get in debt? That's just five, five or six of us, just five or six of us, just five or six of us. Just, just five or six of us, just, just in this section right here. Is it, is it, the rest of y'all are just so blessed. It's just amazing. You know? It's easy to get in debt, but it's harder to get out of debt. The way to get out of debt is that you must have a budget. You must stick to that budget. You must know how much money you have in your account so they don't take your debit card out of the account. You must also know how to maintain a financial ledger to where I'm going and be on top of your payments and make sure your payments are going out right. You can't be having more going out than coming in. If you have more out than coming in, then you're going to wound up in debt. You can't live on chasing credit cards. It starts out real good, but all of a sudden then those cards max out and they'll be calling in on those payments. So you have to balance yourself and watch out that you don't get in, in debt. Um, if I were to mass the uh, calculating thought just in this room of credit card debt, we'll pay off this church five times. Okay, how many of you have a credit card in here? Good. How many of you don't have a credit card? Raise your hand up higher. Father, in the name of Jesus, we bless you for them. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Thank you. You've learned over time that I can't live through credit cards. You must have some type of card because you can't get a rental car without a card. And if you have a debit card from rent a car, they'll tie your debit card up so high, now you don't know what you're going to do with your cards. But I mean, I thought just to get the credit card for rent a car, but I used it for something else. This woman had depended on her husband, so the debt was there, and the debt now becomes a part of what she needs to take care of. And they talk about uh, selling her sons, according to Leviticus 25 and 40. They're going to make the sons become slaves and work for her to work off the debt. The, the, the bondman was going to make the sons work for, as slaves to work off, off the debt. And they had a right to do so because she was in debt to them. She cries in 2 Kings, the fourth chapter, verse 2. She cries out to Elijah. And I taught in the class that this cry was not just a whimper of a voice. It was a loud, squeaking sound that was annoying. Because he was passing her house, but so she screamed out, man of God, I, I need your help. And he asked her the question, what's in your house? Somebody said, what's in your house? In your house? She says, I have this little pot of oil, a little jar of oil, but little becomes much when you give it back to God. And right now you might say, I have a little faith, a little strength, a little prayer, 
a little love, but I have something to work with. I have something to work with. God always leaves you with something to work with. I think Elijah was asking her for what was in your house to test her faith, to see if she was more focused on her dire strait or was she focused on what God was getting ready to do. Uh, the expectation, the expectation of the miraculous. He sees her in this place, trying her faith, moving her off of the focus of the drought that she was in to the place of what God left in her house. So it goes on in this, in this lesson, and we see that um, you have something. You still got something left. You still got something left. And that something you have left might be a little strength, again, a little faith, a little courage, but you have a little joy, but you have something left. Uh, don't let the enemy drain you of everything. Have something left, you know. And you don't wait for somebody to walk in your life to make you happy. You got to be happy yourself. You can make this, get some joy on your face yourself, you know. Stand in the mirror and just grin. Just grin in the mirror. I'm all right, you know, because ain't nobody else coming but God. But with God's help, a little is enough for him to work with. Elijah commanded her to go and borrow these vessels, empty vessels. She went and bought the empty vessels, her and her sons, and brought them back to the house. The empty vessels are potential, having the capacity to develop into something in the future. You're sitting next to a person that has potential. You don't know the value they, of their potentials, but God knows it. And he sees that he can use them to become a testimony to others. Say, I have potential. I'm not, what I am, where I am now is not where I'm going to be. I have, have potentials. And God can use that even in this empty space that I am in. Second Kings 4th chapter in verse 4, he says, Now come in and shut the door behind you and your sons. Then pour it into all the vessels and set aside the full ones, one by one. Shutting the door, shutting the door. Borrowed vessels, but here is a season where you have to shut the door. Everybody cannot be in your ear. And everybody cannot be in your space. And you cannot judge every face by its face. Just shut the door. Avoid the naysayers, avoid the dramas, avoid the miracle killers, avoid those who don't believe in anything. This, just avoid them. And you have a personal time with God when you shut the door. When you shut the door, you're shutting out, again, all the negative and allowing faith to come in. You're shutting out all those who are in misery, and you're allowing those that are looking for miracles to come in. Shut in the door. The Bible says in Psalms 81 and 10 that if you open your mouth wide, I will fill it. God is able to feel your cry, but you got to cry till it rains in your life. Expecting the miraculous when God is getting ready to do acts of faith in your life, you have to shut the door. Let me say that again. It took me a long time to write it. When God is getting ready to do acts of faith in your life, you have to shut the door. I need 50 people to raise your hand up and say, shut down, devil. Shut down. Shut down. I ain't got time, but I shut the door. You put out the negative spirits. That's what Jesus did. In Luke 8 and 51, 54, if you're writing, he comes to the house of this mother and father. He had just passed the woman with the issue of blood. The mother and father was in another dire extreme. Jesus declared to the mourners that the child was sleeping. Luke 8, 51, 52. She's sleeping and they ridiculed him. In other words, this moment has passed and it's over. But Jesus says it's not over yet until he announces that it's over. Jesus, the Bible says, put all them out and just dismiss them. I decree you got to dismiss some folk in this season. <laughs> you got to dismiss all that vibe. Just, 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 just follow my hand and let the door, let go out the door. Just go on out the door because I, I got to dismiss you because you, 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 you're draining my, my faith right now. It took me a long time to get my faith up. But now here you come saying it, it, it ain't going to happen. He, they ridiculed. He ridiculed Jesus. But Jesus, the Bible says in, in, in this Luke 8 chapter, he shutting the door, putting them out, and only walked in with people of faith. The ch mother and the father, I'm paraphrasing the context, the father and the mother, Peter, James, and John, and he took the damsel by the hand, lifting her up and saying, get up. 
And she got up immediately, her spirit returned back to her, and she moved in the power of his reach and pull. Jesus commanded them to feed the girl. It's strange, beautiful, how that even in this dire strait, the girl is expiring, but she wakes up and she wants some chicken. It's just amazing. I'm just amplified, message Bible. First thing she wanted was to eat. And Jesus said, well, give us something to eat, you know. Not proving the fact that she's alive. I already knew that she was getting up, so he told them to give her something to eat. Here is where he shuts the door and puts them out. He told the parents, he says, uh, the parents was filled with amazement in that eighth chapter in the latter verses. Filled with so much amazement and wonder, they wanted to go tell everybody, but Jesus says, no, 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 don't tell anyone yet. I don't need any propaganda. Hold on. It's going to be a time to testify, but not now. I just wanted you to see the miraculous how it takes place. Could Jesus have risen the girl up while the daughters were in the room? Absolutely. But sometimes there comes a place where the privacy of miracles are blinded to those who cannot see you, unless their eyes be open and understand that he's a miracle worker. You see what God's getting ready to do, but they don't see what God's getting ready to do. You in church shouting and jumping and know that the bills are behind, but you see God's about to make a way for you. It's not just that. You heard the doctor's report, but you're waiting for the final report, but you still got to walk around with a report that he don't know really what to say, but you're waiting for the final report, and so you're expecting a miracle. I'm just wondering, is anybody in this room this morning or online expecting the unexpectable from God? Everyone cannot be in your miracle space. But they will see the miracle of God on your life. They can't handle it. They can't handle it. They cannot handle it. Uh, there was a boy in, in another text of scripture leaving that one. I think in John, the ninth chapter, there was a man that was born blind. And they, they was being questioned by the church people. Uh, who opened your eyes in John 9? And he begins to give the explanation. And they said it could not have been Jesus because he, he, this man's a sinner. He could not have opened your eyes. And in, in John 9 and 25, the boy says, whether Jesus is a sinner or not, all I know is that I was blind, but now I see. Whether Jesus can help me or not, I'm not sure. Whether Jesus is a sinner or not, I'm not sure. All I know, I'm sitting here today. I was on drugs. I was messed up. I was cracked up. I was going crazy. I was, uh, 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 I was, I was, I was, but now, I need some but now people to clap your hands and say, God, I thank you. It didn't end on that side. I got a testimony. Look to your left and right. So oh, I got a testimony. I got a testimony. Here is what I want you to know. I was a sinner, but now I'm a saint. I was on my way to hell. Now I'm on my way to heaven. I was lost, but now I'm found. I was sad, but now I'm happy, 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 happy. All the day long. Truly what God does in secret, he will reward openly. It's behind closed doors, shut doors, that prayer in a session that goes up before God. Mark 6 and 6, and I'm, I'm, I'm going to be done with this. Mark 6 and 6. But you, when you pray, go into your room, and when you have shut the door, look up here at me. Room completely means a space in the house. But put one finger on your temple, say, this is a room also. So when you pray, you go in. Everybody can't come in while you're going in. You have to ah, shut the door and keep all that out because you need to get to God. Amen? Go in to your room, and when you have shut the door, pray to the Father. Mark 6 and 6. Who is in the secret place? And your Father, who is in secret, will reward you openly. Raise your right hand and say, I'm waiting for my reward. The expectation of reward is for those that desires it and it comes. Not expect anything, don't expect to get 
anything. But when you are expecting things, not just from a mere man, but from God, he won't keep you waiting for long. He will come right on time. Shutting the door and praying. When you shut the door and pray, you bring down a supply of grace as long as your heart is open to receive it. This woman in 2 Kings 4 and 6, she says she went in, she shut the door, and she begins to pour oil into these vessels. From the meager portion that she had, she begins to pour. And as she begins to pour, a fountain opens up. Uh, freely you give, freely you receive. You can't be God given because the more you give, the more he'll give back to you. But the more you pour, the more comes back to you. The more you give, it'll give back to you. Press measures, shaking together and running over. Only reason the oil stopped flowing because you have no vessels to fill. But the more you give out, the more God will give back in. You can't praise him enough for him not to show up in your praise. You can't thank him enough for him not to show up in your thanksgiving. But if you don't pour out, he's not getting anything back. Open your mouth wide and I will fill it. Whatever you cry to me about, I have the answer right here. You'll come to a fountain that will never run dry. Whatever you need, God's got it. If God don't have it, it cannot be gotten. But if it is to be gotten, God has it. But you got to pour, pour, pour. She began to pour and told her sons, bring me a vessel. Say the story as I come to the end of it. They're in a house. They're in her house. They're also in a point of thought. And that's in the space of their thinking. But anybody that's in that space is going to be filled. You cannot come into a house that's oil is pouring and you don't get filled with the oil. You cannot come into a space of joy and don't get filled with the joy. Only reason you cannot get filled, you're already full or you're not hungry or thirsty for it. But if you open up the spigot of your mind and allow the spirit to flow, it is not to be the only person in it with oil. I need you to just take your hand up in the air like you got a big cup and just pour a little bit on your neighbor's head so you're going to get something before you leave here, I promise you. I got enough to give. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, they're real dry. Get them one more time. Say, take another dump. Take another dose. You two dry sitting next to me. It's like fire shut up in my bones. So you don't need to sit next to me quiet like you're so got it together. You need healing. You need deliverance. You need joy. Uh, come on, online. Pour, 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 pour. Ah, uh, pour to every vessel is filled. Pour to everyone in the house gets enough. Pour to no one leaves empty. Pour into your business. Pour into your sickness. Pour on your children. Pour wherever you can. Pour into your treasury. Pour into gifts. Pour into talent. Pour into ability and stability. Pour to they have enough to understand. Not only do I have it now, I'm stable enough to carry it. You can pour and have ability, but you're not stable. I want to pour into you have ability and stability. You'll be able to do something great for God. Pour into you have grace for grace upon your life. It is a full grace that gives the potential that God has promised. You pour into the grace comes. In a daring strait she was. Creditors are at the door, but I decree debt free. I decree you live on the rest. I decree you get to the place where you have surplus. I've decreed the miracle of surplus and the potentials to have more than enough. I decree you have supply and more than enough in the name of Jesus. You shall not want any good thing because you did what God told you to do. You move from lack to abundance. Beautiful illustration of this miracle was in obedience and faith. I did what you said, Pastor. I start looking at my debt and my bills and I start reducing some of this stuff and waiting for my miracle. How did you start doing that? I got the empty things that I couldn't feel, brought them before God, took what little I had in my own gift and potential and I began to pour. I poured back into what God gave me and he began to fill it all up. Isn't God amazing? He gives enough for everything. Every vessel in your house. 
decree over your house. Everybody in my house is going to be full. Everybody in this church is going to be full. Everybody around me is going to be full. Don't get close to me if you don't want a blessing because there are blessings flowing on of my life. Full. Give him one more dip while you're standing there. Give him, here, here, here. Faith and work goes together. It's, are y'all just pouring like y'all just got bottles everywhere? <laughs> Preach the last part of my message with me. Look at somebody's now expecting the miraculous. It's faith and works. When you put faith and works together, Faith will outwork your work. If you move in the ridiculous, God will do the miraculous. I don't want you to get full things. I want you to get empty things. So when they do get full, you're not going to praise nobody but him that told you to pour and he filled everything up. Expect the miraculous. Finish the message for me now. Tell him, here's the beautiful part. God set you up in debt, in trouble, in a hard place, only to perform the miraculous in your life. And through this meager bit you have, you're gonna be living on surplus, overflow, more than enough, strength for today and strength for tomorrow. God said, your better days are gonna be better than your days right now. Get your mouth up off the floor. Quit looking sad and lonely and get ready to go in and shut the door. And anybody that comes in, got to come in with blessing on their mind. I don't need no negativity right now. If you ain't going to build me up, I promise I'm not going to let you tear me down. I've done too much to come to where I am, so I'm going to shut. Oh, I see it, Holy Spirit. Come on, watch me. Point at two people and say, I see a revival in my house. Yeah. The Lord just told me to tell somebody, while them kids are sleeping, go in there and do like my mom used to do and just pour the oil right on their head. Well, and wash the sheets later. Just here you go. You're gonna get this. <laughs> You're gonna get this tonight. Yeah, yeah. Pour. 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 Hold your hands up, please. Father, we bless you. You send your word and you heal us and deliver us from fear. You are the miracle worker. Light and darkness. That's who you are. Thank you for the grace that you put on our lives to pour into other lives. If they don't even know they need it but you've given us the grace to live on natural overflow and spiritual overflow. Fill us till we want some more. There's nothing that can satisfy like the river of our God. So I thank you. I speak to the imagination of thoughts creativities the insight to create let that dream that idea it seems so ridiculous become genuine that I'll pick that pin up once again 
finish out the drawing of that device, that book, that idea. Let me take the three lyrics of that song and make it an anthem. Let what you've given me become a new penmanship. Let it not die for lack of attention. I speak to the creative spirit. I'm going to do this. I'm going to try this business one more time. So I got some kingdom work to do. I need some things to happen in this house. So, so I'm going to pour once again. And watch you feel it. Like you filled me. Fill us up, Lord God. Where there is vision, there will be provision. Let it be abundance. In the name of Jesus. We check with high said, Father, you know they're going to laugh at me. They're going to think it's silly. But that's all right. I'll have the last laugh.